What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today is a very exciting day for me because we have finally completed one of my all-time favorite rifles and it's been a journey. So as anyone with an Instagram account is well aware, over the last few years, tactical lever actions have become extremely popular. And a while back, we got in the game with this bad boy, the Henry Allweather Lever Action 4570. So you guys have seen this rifle on the channel quite a bit. It is probably my favorite looking rifle that I've ever owned in my life. But there's one upgrade I've been holding out on and we finally just completed it. And if you haven't figured it out by now, it is the buttstock from Ranger Point Precision. So I did not think that this gun could possibly get any cooler, but I think it just did. Now I know a lot of you traditionalists out there are not fans of these tactical lever guns and I get it, there is beauty in simplicity and with companies like Henry, they are absolutely great the way they are. And that's why it took me so long to finally get this butt stock because I loved the black walnut stock that came with the rifle. But now that it's complete and I finally got it, I'm glad I did because in my opinion, it definitely looks and feels even better than it did before. All in all, I think this is about a $2,500 rifle, which really isn't bad when you consider everything going on here. So we'll talk about it more in a little bit, but now that it's complete and we have the ultimate lever action rifle, let's destroy some stuff with it and see how it feels. And by the way, guys, I recently noticed that the spammers are back in the comments. I just changed my icon like two months ago trying to get rid of them and it worked for a little bit, but now apparently they're back and they're bugging you guys again. So I apologize, I've tried everything. I've reported them, deleted them. If you don't see my name with a check mark, it is not me. I also wouldn't do giveaways in the comments without telling you about it on video. So I apologize, just ignore them or Cuss them out for me. All right, very first shots with the new buttstock and the rifle being completely finished. Let's see how it feels. Glorious. <laughs> That is a significant improvement from the factory buttstock. And by the way, two quivers is probably a bit much. I just put them on there so it would look cool for the video, but I probably wouldn't run both of them. Unless I was going full John Wick and I needed 12 extra rounds of 4570. But they just look so cool. By the way, those were low pressure 4570s. I'm sure you could tell they didn't have a ton of recoil. This is not a low pressure 4570. This is the 460 grain plus P Grizzly and it is the most powerful 4570 I've ever shot. I don't shoot these very often anymore because they lock this gun up, which number one, it's a pain to get out, but it also scares me that something might be out of spec with this particular round. So let's shoot one. I'm not gonna put this on steel, just right there on the railroad ties. <laughs> Let's see if it jammed the gun up that time. Yep, so you can see, no matter how hard I pull on that lever, it will not extract that shell casing. Not really sure what's going on there. Obviously it's expanding in the chamber or you know something's out of spec and that particular round will not cycle. So let's get the punch rod. Go ahead and smack it up against this tree. There it goes. So it's not too hard to punch out. Like it doesn't take a ton of force and that shell casing looks perfectly fine to me. It does not look bulged out or expanded in any weird way. Not really sure what causes that. Now this is probably my favorite round for the 4570. It is the 325 grain Hornady FTX. We've got three of them left and I've got three targets on the table. Coincidence. Pineapple fell over. Can't let him off that easy. <laughs> I don't shoot 4570s at close range very often, and now I know why. Good God.
And this is all that's left of our pineapple. It just decapitated that thing. And by the way, pineapples and cantaloupes are not like watermelons. They don't typically explode like that. So it just shows you how powerful the 4570 is. It just vaporized them. So lever guns are pretty self-explanatory and simple to operate. You load the magazine tube, rack the lever, fire the round, and then rack the lever again to eject the spent shell casing and pick up a new one. This particular version has a side loading gate and a loading port in the magazine tube. Unfortunately, my handguard kind of covers the magazine tube, but the new Ranger Point handguards have a little cutout right there that allow you to access it. I prefer side loading anyway, just because it's a little bit faster, but it would be nice to have the option. So I'll probably be upgrading that as well. Magazine tube holds four plus one, which actually feels like a lot when you're shooting 4570 and pretty much everything you see on this rifle is upgrades. Aside from the internals and all the important stuff is still Henry, but I've obviously customized the sh out of this thing, which is why it looks so ridiculous. We'll start with the butt stock since that is the newest addition and probably my favorite upgrade on this entire thing. So the stock is from Ranger Point Precision and it is absolutely incredible. Aside from just looking freaking awesome, it does have some real advantages. Number one, it's lighter weight than the factory stock and it just balances the rifle perfectly. And what you probably can't see is there are four screws on the corners of the stock. If you loosen those, it allows you to adjust it several inches either way and get the perfect height for the optic you're using. So you can really dial it in. Did I mention it looks cool? Okay. Obviously it has M-lock attachment, so you can put a shell holder on there, the same thing we have up on the handguard. The handguard is also from Ranger Point Precision, and I believe the lever screw is as well. The optic is a Leopold Delta Point Pro, and the top rail is from XS Sights. In my opinion, this is the ultimate lever action 4570 rifle. The only thing I would change is the size of the lever. For the love of God, someone please make a large loop for this rifle. There's a lot of debate out there on Henry versus Marlin. I don't have as much experience with the Marlins. I will say Henry is extremely well made, very high quality, and they have great customer service. I did hear that Marlin was recently bought by Ruger and apparently their quality is just going through the roof. For a while there, Marlin was starting to get kind of a bad name, but apparently they're coming back with a vengeance. So <laughs> I'd like to try those as well. But for now, Henry is still number one on my list. And while we're on the topic of lever guns today, I wanna to recommend Wolf's Prairie Outdoors is probably the most knowledgeable guy on YouTube when it comes to lever action rifles and Pat RMG. They're both great guys and they have a lot of great content on guns like this. I just shoot them. I'm not, you know, a connoisseur like they are. And you'll probably thank me if you go watch their videos because they're a lot smarter than me. <laughs> well, the sun has decided to come out and ruin my entire video, but we're out at about the 80 yard line and I've never shot a 4570 any further than 20 yards probably. So I want to give this a shot. It's a big heavy bullet and I want to see how much it drops at longer range. Going for that yellow gong. Hopefully you guys can see it. That was easy. <laughs> kind of crazy how good that felt, to be honest. I just put the dot right at 12 o'clock on that yellow gong and smoked it. Let's try one more, just to make sure it wasn't a lucky shot. That feels so good. The trigger is so nice in this rifle, it makes it almost impossible to jerk the shot. I could shoot the ball sack off a fly at a thousand meters with this son bitch. Now that is a good cinder block wall. Let's shoot it. 4570 versus cinder block wall. I did this a few months back with an elephant gun and it took like two or three rounds to completely destroy that thing. So I wanna see how the 4570 does. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any powerful ammo left except this one. So we'll start with this, see what it does, and then we'll finish it off with the others. <laughs> the difference in power from that round to the others we've been shooting is incredible. That thing is a beast. Well, I put my dot on top of the cinder block thinking the offset would bring it down a couple inches, but apparently I was far enough away that I didn't need to do that because it went right where I was aiming. But if you go around to the back, you can see that at least some of that bullet easily blew straight through that thing. And we've even got 
some big chunks laying on the ground. So if you're talking about the 4570 for home defense, that is something to think about. It's a very powerful round and gets a lot of penetration. Let's finish them off. All right, we got a full tube and one in the pipe. So six rounds total. I think earlier I said it was four plus one, but apparently it's five plus one. So hopefully that's enough to take out our cinder block wall. It just blew a hole straight through that thing and didn't knock anything over. It's kind of cool. One more. I need more rounds. Got five more rounds. We're doing damage, but I'm not satisfied until it's completely destroyed. So that was a different bullet and you could definitely hear the difference in the impact. Wow. My favorite thing to do when I shoot cinder blocks is look through the rubble for bullet fragments. It looks like we have one right here. And that is awesome. That's the entire bullet surrounded by concrete. Wow. I'm sure some of these broke apart and went all the way through. There's a bullet. Man, that is a giant chunk of lead. That thing completely stayed intact. And looks like there's the jacket from one of them. That might be the Hornady because that does look like the copper jacket from that Hornady bullet. And here's another one with the entire bullet intact surrounded by concrete. That is so freaking cool. All right, so the elephant gun took three or four rounds and the 4570 took nine or 10. But to be fair, those are not the most powerful 4570s either. Make no mistake, with the right ammo, the 4570 is a beast of a caliber. Well, I did not think it was possible for this rifle to get any cooler than it already was, but I gotta say, I think we actually did it. And I wanted to give y'all an update now that the 4570 is finally complete. Until Ranger Point Precision releases more cool stuff that I need to have, then I'll probably buy that too. Will a rifle like this make you a better shooter? No. Will it make you faster, more accurate? Probably not. Will it make you look cooler? Absolutely. And we all know that is really what matters. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. And if there's anything else you would like to see me add to the Henry 4570, let me know down there as well. It already looks so ridiculous. Why not take it even further? And as always, if you want more content, channel updates, and stuff like that, you can follow me on Instagram. I will put links for social media down in the description box below. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.